Hey guys, this is Imu. Today I'm going to teach you the basics of Firebase. We're going to connect to uh, our Firebase project, allow authentication, and show the uh, learn the basics of the real-time database. So here I have a brand new project. It has just finished building. The very first thing we should do before we even begin is to sign into our Gmail account from Android Studio. To do that, come to the upper right corner and click sign in. As you can see, I've already signed in, so it's showing my account. Make sure you do the same on your own computers. So to use Firebase, the first thing you should do is go to your menu and click tools and select Firebase. This will open the Firebase Assistant on the right of the screen, where you can pick whichever tool from the many tools that Firebase offers that you need for your application. So to begin with, let's click Authentication and select Email and Password Authentication. The next window that shows up just gives you a step-by-step -step process for using authentication in your application. So number one, we connect to Firebase. Simply click on the button and it will open the Starting Connect dialog window. Okay, so the window tells me that this project is already connected to FastCMT. So what we'll do is sync the project so that it is up to date. If you're doing this for the first time, you will instead see a window where you can select an existing project, an existing Firebase project that is, or you can create a new one. I suggest you create a new one and make sure you select your country in that same window. Then simply uh, uh, click OK and we will be on the same page. All right, so now you can see that in step one, instead of a button, I have a text that says connected. So now we can move on to step two, add Firebase authentication to your app. Once again, let's click the button. And on the window that opens up, let's click accept changes. So what this will do is it will change your Gradle file, which is this, so that it has the code that allows Firebase authentication. All right, so step two, the button has changed as well to dependencies set up correctly. Now let's move on to step three. Having done step one and step two, you have Firebase in your application essentially. So now from this point on, it's all about the code that you write and the tools that you add from Firebase. So, step three tells us we should check the current auth state and it gives us the code that we should write to do that. So let's copy this. Or you could type it if you like, it's up to you. So, private Firebase auth, mauth. And I'm going to hit Alt Enter so that it imports. And then within the onCreate method, I will initialize my Firebase auth. So mauth is equals to Firebase auth dot get instance, which is this code here. Next, the assistant tells us 
When initializing your activity, check to see if the user is currently signed in. And this is done from the onStart method. So, underneath the onCreate method, we can type onStart and it will auto-generate the onStart method. And then here we can put in this code. Okay, let's import the Firebase user. So, Firebase user current user is equals to mauth.getCurrentUser. Essentially, this Firebase user is looking into the mauth getting a method called getCurrentUser, which will be which will have data if someone has logged in. If someone has not logged in, if the user has not logged in, that is, current user will be null. So those are the only two options. Either someone has logged in and current user has data, or no one has logged in and current user is null. Now, before we move on, you'll notice that there's this update UI method, which is red, and the error tells us cannot resolve update UI. This is not a built-in method like on start or on create. Firebase expects us to create our own update UI method, which we will do. So let's remove this line and instead type an if statement. So as I said, current user will either have data if someone has logged in or it will be null. And if it is null, we can do a very simple if statement saying if current user is null, then we want to go to the login page. So, before we move on, let us actually create a login page. We will put all the code later. For now, let us simply have it. So, you go to Java, New, Activity, and select Empty Activity. Let's call it Start Activity. 